Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion are timers executing the off delay function. Our objective is to introduce the off delay function and put it to use in some illustrated examples. This lecture operates under the assumption you've watched the timers on delay lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. The timers on delay lecture discusses timers in general, introduces common timing functions, and discusses the on delay function in some depth. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time, pardon the pun, to do so now. Recall that a timer is a control device that exhibits a time-based shift between the assertion of its controlling input and the activation or deactivation of its associated contacts. Timers can perform numerous functions, including, but not limited to, on delay, off delay, on end off delay, the flash, repeat, or recycle function, positive or negative edge triggered one shots, cumulative on delays, and more. Today's lecture deals exclusively with the off delay function. Before we dive into an in-depth discussion of the off delay function, allow me to perform a brief walkthrough and review of the other common timing functions. My intention in doing this walkthrough is not to confuse you, but rather to compare and contrast their behavior with one another. Repeated exposure to this topic is the best tactic because similar terms are employed for different functions and it'd be a horrible mistake to confuse one function for another. Expect me to revisit this exact same walkthrough of common functions every time we have occasion to discuss a new one in depth. Recall that a timing diagram of a timer executing the on delay or delay on energized function would look like this. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not instantaneously switch to their opposite state. The normally closed time open contact remains closed and the normally open time close contact remains open. Only after the predetermined delay period T has elapsed do the contacts change states here. The normally closed time open contact opens, and the normally open time close contact closes. When the controlling input is de-energized here, the associated contacts quasi-instantaneously revert to their normal deactivated state. The normally closed time open contact recloses the normally open time closed contact reopens. The on delay timer could be used to turn another motor on a measurable time period after another has started. Compare this behavior to a timer executing the off delay function. A time and diagram of a timer executing the off delay function, sometimes called a delay on de-energize or DODE, would look like this. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts quasi-instantaneously switch their opposite state, just like a regular control relay. The normally closed time closed contact opens, and the normally open time open contact closes. However, when the controlling input is de-energized here, the associated contacts maintain the asserted state. The normally closed time closed contact remains open, and the normally open time open contact remains open. Only after the predetermined delay period T has elapsed do the contacts revert to their deactivated state. The normally closed time closed contact recloses, and the normally open time open contact reopens. Note the different terminology and schematic symbols employed by the off delay in comparison to that of the on delay. They're opposite, as one would expect. An off delay could be used to keep one motor running for a measurable period after you turn another one off. Note for this general purpose orientation, I've purposely simplified the timing diagram of an off delay timer. Compare this behavior to a timer executing the on and off delay function. A timing diagram of a timer executing the on and off delay function would look like this. An on and off delay, as the name implies, executes a combination of the on delay and off delay function. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not immediately switch to their opposite state. The normally closed contact remains closed and the normally open contact remains open. Only after the predetermined delay period T1 has elapsed do the contacts change states here. The normally closed contact opens and the normally open contact closes. This is the on delay portion of the on and off delay function. When the controlling input is de-energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not immediately switch to their opposite state, but rather maintain their activated state. The normally closed contact remains open, and the normally open contact remains closed. Only after the predetermined delay period T2 has elapsed do the contacts revert to their deactivated state. 
the normally closed contacts reclose, and the normally open contacts reopen. This is the off delay portion of the on and off delay function. A symmetric on and off delay timer means the on delay and off delay time period are equal to each other. T1 equals T2. To set a symmetric on and off delay timer would necessitate only one delay adjustment. In contrast, an asymmetric on and off delay timer means the on delay and off delay are not equal to each other. T1 does not equal T2. Timers executing an asymmetric on and off delay would require two independently adjustable delay periods. An on and off delay timer could be used to coordinate two motors such that motor B stops a period after motor A starts, then motor B stops a period after motor A stops. Note for this general purpose orientation, I purposely simplified the timing diagram of the on and off delay timer. Compare this behavior to a timer executing the flash function, sometimes called repeat or recycle. A timing diagram of a timer executing the flash function would look like this. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts continuously alternate between the activated and deactivated state with a measurable period. Similar to our previous discussion about on and off delay timers, flash function might be symmetric, where the activation period is equal in magnitude to the deactivation period, or asymmetric, where the activation and deactivation periods are independently adjustable. A symmetric flash would necessitate only one adjustment. In contrast, an asymmetric flash would necessitate two adjustment points, one for delay period T1, one for delay period T2. The flash function could be used to create a super annoying warning strobe when a motor is energized, or perhaps timeshare a load between two different motors. Compare this behavior to a timer executing the one-shot function. A timing diagram of a timer executing the one-shot function would look like this. For a positive or rising edge triggered one-shot, when the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts only temporarily assume the opposite activated state for a period T, and then revert to their deactivated state, despite the controlling input still being energized. This would be a rising or positive edge triggered one shot, and essentially does exactly what the name suggests, and that the one shot function is only enabled once for a period T on a rising or positive going transition of the controlling input. Alternatively, a negative or falling edge triggered one shot is one that the one shot function is only enabled once for a period T on a falling or negative going transition of the controlling input. One shots can be used to assert an output for a desired time period following the energized or de-energized transition of another device. One shots are particularly interesting because manufacturers occasionally include a slew of handy features, including resets and retriggerable versus non-retriggerable one shots. Note for this general purpose orientation, I've purposely simplified the timing diagram for rising and falling edge one shots. Finally, compare this behavior to a timer executing the cumulative on delay function. A cumulative on delay timer is a record keeping function where the timer does not temporarily shift the outputs but rather keeps track of how long its controlling input has been energized. Only after the controlling input has been asserted for the predetermined period of time do the outputs respond. Note, despite the controlling input being discontinuously energized, only once the timer has accumulated the required delay period here do the contacts switch to their activated opposite states. Such a timer could be used to keep track of how long a particular controlling input has been asserted and then alert the system that some maintenance or other task must occur. I like to think of cumulative on delay timers as little accountants that keep track of how long the controlling input has been asserted and continually monitor how much time remains in the bank before it activates the output. Note for this general purpose orientation, I've purposely simplified the timing diagram for cumulative on delay timers. To be sure there are other timer functions and twisted offspring of unholy unions of these common functions. However, these are more than likely the most common timer functions you'll run across. This orientation is intended to be general in nature and does not dive into specifics nor manufacture idiosyncrasies. Be aware of subtle differences in different terminology used to describe the same features. Returning to the topic at hand, off delay timers, sometimes called delay on de-energized timers, you'll recall that a timing diagram of a timer executing the off delay or delay on de-energized function would look like this. 
when the timer relay controlling input is energized by pilot voltage, the associated contacts immediately change to their opposite activated states, just like a regular control relay. However, when the controlling input is de-energized here, the associated contacts do not respond immediately, but only do so after a predetermined delay period. The name says it all, off delay or delay on de-energize means that the contacts transition to their opposite states only after a period of delay of the controlling input being de-energized. Such a delayed transition could be used to allow one motor to continue running for a measurable period after another motor is stopped, among numerous other applications, all servicing to coordinate the sequential function of a complicated system. Schematically, timer contacts executing the off-delay function are often illustrated using the switch symbol with an arrow modifier illustrating which action is being delayed. Here is a symbol for a normally closed, time-closed contact, often abbreviated NCTC. The contact is drawn normally closed. However, the arrow indicates that the reclosure of the contact is delayed a predetermined period beyond the moment the controlling input is de-energized. Here is the symbol for a normally open, timed open contact, often abbreviated NO. TO. The contact is drawn normally open, however the arrow indicates that the reopening of the contact is delayed a predetermined period beyond the moment the controlling input is de-energized. As helpful and informative as these schematic symbols are, for some reason they have fallen out of favor and you may just see a contact associated with a timer illustrated as a regular normally closed or normally open contact. The latter logic documentation should inform a reader that the contacts are executing the off delay function. Due to the sheer variety of timer functions available, not every function has a handy schematic shorthand equivalent. However, I'll try to make use of these symbols for off-delay contacts since I find them very useful. Note the terminology and schematic symbols for contacts executing the off-delay function are essentially the opposite of those executing the on-delay function, as we'd expect. While this timing diagram illustrates the off-delay function in its simplest form, the truth of the matter is that not all off-delay timers are this simple. Being solid-state devices, the microchip conducting the timing operation often needs to be continuously powered up for it to execute the off-delay function. The internal circuitry of the microchip is responsible for keeping the associated contacts in their opposite state for the required delay period after the controlling input disappears. For this reason, timers executing the off-delay function often necessitate an additional auxiliary controlling input often illustrated as a coil with three inputs, A1, A2, and either auxiliary, B, or sometimes in. The coil from A1 to A2 must be continually energized for the timer to properly function. The auxiliary controlling input now serves as the initiation signal for the off-delay function, whereas the coil from A1 to A2 serves to simply power the device. A timing diagram of a timer necessitating an auxiliary controlling input executing the off-delay function might look something like this. Given the coil from A1 to A2 is continually powered up, when the auxiliary controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts immediately switch to their opposite states, just like a regular control relay. However, when the auxiliary controlling input is de-energized here, the associated contacts do not respond immediately but rather only after the predetermined delay period T has elapsed. Note for the purposes of this general lecture, I'm trying to avoid getting entangled in manufacturer specifics. It is your responsibility to interpret the timing diagram for your particular multifunction timer of interest. Note if a timer necessitating an auxiliary controlling input executing the off delay function lost power to the coil during the off delay period, the associated contacts would halt the delay and immediately return to their deactivated state and reset the timer. This allows an off-delay timer conducting the delay to be overridden by an emergency input for immediate stop purposes. We'll examine this feature in a moment. To set up a multifunction timer to execute the off-delay function, a technician must first choose the correct function and then set the delay period. Here's an example of a multifunction timer with both a two-terminal coil and an additional auxiliary controlling input. A timing diagram of this timer executing the off-delay function looks exactly as I've illustrated. This particular timer can perform eight different functions, A through H. 
To set this particular multifunction timer to perform the off delay function for a period of five seconds, a technician will rotate the function selector to function B, the off delay function as illustrated in the table. Then a technician would choose an appropriate delay. This particular multifunction timer necessitates a two-step process to adjust the delay period. First, select the range and then adjust the range percentage. The range selection presents possibilities from one second up to 100 hours. The percentage then can be used to fine tune the delay period inside this range. For example, 50% of 10 seconds would be a delay of five seconds, as would be 5% of 100 seconds. However, 50% of 10 seconds would allow finer tuning around the five second region. Note this timer has two indicator LEDs, one that indicates when the device is powered up and another that indicates when the outputs are in their activated state. Unfortunately, it does not have an LED indicating when the auxiliary controlling input is asserted. This would be a great feature, but sometimes you gotta work with the tools you've got out of hand. You know you set up the timer correctly. If you power up the device, assert the controlling auxiliary input at this moment here, then see the output immediately change states. When the controlling auxiliary input is de-energized at this moment here, the outputs did not instantaneously revert to their deactivated state, but rather maintain the activated state for an additional five seconds. After this off delay period has elapsed, the contacts return to their deactivated state as we'd expect for an off delay timer. Troubleshooters take note. A multifunction timer executing the right function at the wrong time needs to have the delay adjusted. In contrast, a multifunction timer executing the wrong function at the right time needs to have the function adjusted. I'd like to say the misinterpretation of functions is a rare occurrence, but it isn't, and you need to be aware of this possibility. Let's now move on to the remaining topic of this lecture, putting a timer executing the off delay function to use. The off delay is again characterized by a delayed transition of the associated contacts a period after the controlling input has been de-energized. For these examples, we'll make use of a multifunction timer that necessitates the coil be continuously powered up and requires the use of an auxiliary controlling input as illustrated in this timing diagram. The classic introductory example of an off delay timer is the time delayed response of two pilot lights. Note the coil of the timer relay is continuously powered up by the connection in rung one. The e-stop would serve to completely depower the timer and the whole system. The three wire control circuit in rungs two and three serves to simultaneously energize the coil of a regular control relay CR1 and the auxiliary controlling input of timer relay TR1. Contact CR1A is associated with a regular control relay CR1 and serves only as a holding contact, allowing the circuit to maintain the last asserted state. Rung four contains a normally closed time closed contact TR1A associated with timer relay TR1 in series with a red pilot light. Rung five contains a normally open timed open contact TR1B associated with timer relay TR1 in series with a green pilot light. Let's assume the timer executing the off delay function is set to execute a five second delay. Note the start state of this system is red light on, green light off. When an operator presses the start push button, the coil of control relay CR1 and the auxiliary input of timer relay TR1 are both energized. Contact CR1A immediately switches to the activated closed state and establishes a holding circuit which allows an operator to release the start push button. Similarly, the contacts associated with timer relay TR1 executing the off delay function also immediately change states. TR1A opens and TR1B closes. The red light turns off and the green light turns on. When an operator presses stop, both the coil of control relay CR1 and the auxiliary controlling input to the timer relay TR1 are de-energized. Contact CR1A immediately returns to the deactivated state and removes the holding circuit. However, given the internal circuitry of the timer relay is still powered up, the contacts TR1A and TR1B executing the off delay function, however, remain in their activated state. Only after the predetermined delay period of one, two, three, four, five seconds has elapsed, do these off delay contacts return to their deactivated states. The normally closed time closed TR1A contact recloses and the normally open time open TR1B contact reopens. 
the red light turns on and the green light turns off five seconds after an operator has pressed and released stop. Consider the utility of the e-stop. Recall that the lights only return to their deactivated state after the adjustable delay period elapsed. The position of this e-stop therefore serves to completely depower the timer and override the delayed stop period afforded by the timer executing the off delay function and bring the system to an immediate stop without a delay. Allow me to demonstrate. As previously, when an operator presses and releases start, the coil of control relay CR1 and the auxiliary controlling input of timer relay TR1 are both energized. Contact CR1A immediately switches the activated closed state and establishes a holding circuit. Similarly, the contacts associated with timer relay TR1 executing the off delay function also immediately change states. TR1A opens and TR1B closes. The red light turns off and the green light turns on. When an operator presses and releases stop, both the coil of control relay CR1 and the auxiliary controlling signal to the timer relay TR1 is de-energized. Contact CR1A immediately returns to the deactivated state and removes the holding circuit. The contacts TR1A and TR1B executing the off delay function, however, remain in their activated state as long as the timer remains powered. The timer begins the 5 second countdown. However, let's say an operator needs to bring this system to an immediate halt halfway through the count. By opening the e-stop, the timer is completely depowered and all associated contacts immediately return to their deactivated state. The normally closed time closed TR1A contact immediately recloses and the normally open time open TR1B contact immediately reopens. Reclosure of the e-stop will return the system to the start state. The red light turns on and the green light turns off. The e-stop therefore overrides the ordinarily delayed transition for the purposes of an immediate stop. Additionally, by completely depowering the timer, the count is customarily reset back to zero. Note the e-stop can also be repositioned such that it affects only rung one thereby serving to depower the timer only. Consider this slightly modified circuit, illustrating the time-delayed response of an off-delay contact. Note we've ditched the regular control relay CR1 and the holding contact CR1A. CR1A has been replaced with TR1C, yet another normally open time-open contact associated with timer relay TR1 executing the off-delay. Let's assume the off delay period is set to again 5 seconds. If you truly understand the behavior of an off delay timer, you should be able to predict how this system works given the following two scenarios. First, when an operator presses and releases start, and then presses and releases stop. And two, when an operator presses and releases start, and then presses and holds stop open for a period of longer than 5 seconds. By all means, Pause the lecture and think about this. If you're tracking, here's how this circuit responds to the first scenario, when an operator presses and releases start, and then presses and quickly releases stop. The start state of the system is such that the red light is on and the green light is off, and the coil of timer relay TR1 is energized. When an operator presses stop, the auxiliary controlling input of timer relay TR1 is energized. TR1C closes and establishes a holding circuit, thereby allowing an operator to release the start push button. TR1A opens and turns off the red light. TR1B closes and turns on the green light. Let's now examine the first scenario, where an operator presses and quickly releases the stop button. When an operator presses the stop button, the auxiliary controlling input to the timer relay is de-energized, and the counter begins the off-delay countdown period. The associated contacts, TR1A, TR1B, and TR1C, do not immediately return to their deactivated state, but rather remain in their activated state for the adjustable delay period. TR1A remains open, TR1B remains closed, as does TR1C. The red light remains off, the green light remains on, and the holding circuit remains established for the adjustable delay. If an operator released the stop button prior to the off delay period elapsing, the reclosure of the stop button reasserts the input to the timer relay. The timer resets and the contacts remain in their activated state. Therefore, pressing and quickly releasing the stop button does not stop the system due to the still established holding circuit made possible by the off delay timer. The second scenario is different. 
only when an operator has enough patience to hold the stop button open for a period of longer than the adjustable delay period of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 seconds do the associated contacts associated with the timer relay change states. Tier 1A closes, Tier 1B opens, as does Tier 1C. The red light turns on, the green light turns off, and the holding circuit is broken. An operator can now release the stop button. If you think about it, the function of the stop button in this circuit is to allow an operator a full 5 seconds to contemplate if shutting down this system is really, 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 really what they mean to do. Such a circuit could be used to ensure that the shutdown of some ordinarily mission-critical system isn't just some passing fancy, but rather an intentional action you're at least willing to wait for 5 seconds to happen. As previously, the e-stop would serve to completely depower the timer relay for purposes of overriding the off delay. I think this is a pretty fun example circuit that illustrates the utility and function of off delay timers. Besides making some stupid lights blink, a timer relay executing the off delay function can also be used to perform some industrial task. Consider a sump, a float switch, and a motor driven pump. The ladder logic controlling the motor driven pump makes use of a timer executing the off delay function that will keep the pump pumping ever so slightly longer after the automatic input has been reset. The system could be used to pump the sump dry, or if the float switch was properly positioned within the tank, used to pump out a measurable quantity of liquid. Allow me to demonstrate. The system starts the day with a float switch not triggered. Note that the e-stop keeps the timer relay tier 1 powered up, as does the normally closed overload contact. Over time, liquid fills the tank and triggers float switch 1. The now closed float switch 1 energizes the input signal to the timer relay, TR1. Let's assume the timer relay, TR1, is executing the off delay function and is set for a 30 second delay. The associated normally open time open contact, TR1A, immediately closes and the P contact recoil is energized. The P primary contacts close and the motor driven pump springs to life. As the pump begins evacuating the tank, eventually the float switch falls to the reset level and reopens, removing the input signal to the timer relay TR1. The normally open time open contact TR1A, executing the off delay function, however, remains closed for the delay period, and the P contactor coil remains energized. The pump continues to evacuate the tank for a period of 30 seconds. Once the adjustable delay period has elapsed, the normally open time open contact TR1A executing the off delay function reopens and de energizes the P contactor coil. The P primary contacts open and the motor driven pump turns off. Given a constant flow rate, a measure of volume over time, and a constant time period, this system could be used to pump a measurable quantity of liquid out of the tank. Let's consider the function of the E stop. As previously, a quantity of liquid triggers float switch 1. The now closed float switch 1 energizes the input signal to the timer relay TR1. The associated normally open time open contact TR1A immediately closes and the P contactor coil is energized. The P primary contacts close and the motor driven pump springs to life. Eventually the float switch falls to the reset level and reopens, de-energizing the input signal to timer relay TR1. The normally open time open contact TR1A executing the off delay function however remains closed for the delay period and the P contactor coil remains energized. Let's say however halfway through the extended pumping sequence, your little dog falls into the well is in danger of being sucked up by the pump. Assuming you want to keep the dog, which may or may not be the case, you hit the e-stop. The open e-stop completely depowers the timer and whatever task the associated contacts are performing at that time is immediately overridden and they immediately return to their deactivated state. Tier 1A immediately opens up and de-energizes the P contactor coil, turning off the motor driven pump. You can now retrieve your wet dog. Once your dog is on dry land, you can now reset the e-stop. The timer is repowered, reset, and returns to the deactivated state. The normally closed overload contact serves a similar purpose and that if the pump was ever overloaded, let's say because it sucked up a stupid dog, the timer would be completely depowered and all contacts would immediately return to their deactivated state and override the off delay function. By the way, 
This example is rooted in a true story involving me having to retrieve my stupid dog from a shipping lock. Moving on, off-delay timers can also be used to synchronize separate industrial tasks. For example, consider two motors, A and B, that must start simultaneously. However, motor B needs to keep running five seconds long after motor A is shut down. A classic example might be a fan that needs to continue cooling a system for a predetermined time after it has been shut off, or a conveyor belt with two sections. Consider a simple motor-driven conveyor belt system with two sections, A and B, that need to be started simultaneously. However, at the end of the day, conveyor belt B needs to run a little bit longer after belt A is shut off. A technician charged with shutting down the system would initiate the shutdown the moment the last box tumbles off belt A and falls on belt B. Belt A should immediately shut down, but belt B should continue to run for a predetermined off-delay period, then it too will shut down. Such a system could be used to ensure that both belts are cleared at the end of the day. Allow me to demonstrate. At the start of the day, both motors are de-energized and the timer is powered. An operator presses start, which energizes the auxiliary controlling input of timer relay TR1 and the A contactor coil. When the A contactor coil is energized, its associated contacts immediately change states. Auxiliary contact A1 closes and establishes a holding circuit. An operator can now release the start push button. The A primary contacts close and motor A springs to life. Simultaneously, contact TR1B, executing the off delay function, also closes and energizes the B contactor coil. The B contactor primary contacts close and motor B springs to life. Both sections of the conveyor belt start simultaneously. At the end of the day, a technician charged with shutting down the system initiates the shutdown the moment the last box tumbles off of belt A and onto belt B. Opening the stop button de-energizes both the A contactor coil and the auxiliary controlling input to timer relay TR1. The associated A contacts immediately return to their deactivated state. The A1 auxiliary holding contact opens as do the primary A contacts. Motor A free spins to a halt just as the box lands on belt B. The TR1B contact executing the off delay function, however, does not immediately return to its deactivated state, but rather maintains the activated state for the predetermined off delay period. An operator can release the stop push button and motor B continues to usher the box to the end of the line. After the predetermined off delay period has elapsed, TR1B opens and de-energizes the B contactor coil. The B primary contacts open just as the box reaches the end of the line. Again, note that the E-stop and the series relationship of both the normally closed overload A and normally closed overload B contacts would serve to completely depower the timer relay and the whole system in the event of an operator-triggered emergency or if either motor ever experienced a sustained overload. All right, that is about that for this lecture. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at multifunction timers performing the off delay function. We introduced the off delay function, reviewed general timer functions, learned how to set up an example timer relay to perform the off delay function, and finally employed a timer executing the off delay function in several illustrated examples. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.